I'm not lying to you folks. I'm not a pervert. I'm not a, anything. I'm not. I don't know. Maybe you are. This is the moment 49-year-old teacher Soto realized he was spending the rest of his life behind bars. And these are five more shocking and satisfying examples of teachers getting caught for their disgusting actions, starting with Soto. In March 2019, a female student told her friends that her 49-year-old teacher had touched her inappropriately the previous month. Soto had pulled her aside from her PE class, pretending to fix a test she had taken. But when they were alone in the room, he touched her inappropriately. Soto was then arrested a month later on a warrant and was brought in for interrogation. So you say you normally take three to four kids. What happened this time? This time it was just her. You know, she was asking me because she goes, I, you know, I was concerned about Friday because you're going to meet my mommy and all this stuff. And I said, okay, you know, I, I would, you know, I wasn't even thinking. I just why? Wouldn't even why. If you're going to take a female student to your classroom, you didn't think to like, uh, let me just grab um, another. And, all, and honestly, I'm just, I just wanted to get her work done. Get her and then go back to specials. I was, and I'm, I'm doing great. Um, so, you know, and like I said, that's my bad. I while she was sitting at the U shape or kidney table, did you walk over to check on her? And, and not until she said something about her wrist or oh. her arm. This is all well and good, but the cops are having a hard time figuring out why he was alone in a room with a student in the first place. Things already aren't adding up, and they have to figure this out. Was she the only one in the classroom with yes. you at the time? Do you normally take kids in the no, classroom? No, that's like what that? I was telling them. Normally, I try to get a couple of kids, and I was just. Is that like no. policy, or is that common practice, or it's, what is that? It's probably common practice. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it is written somewhere, but if you're going to bring a student back to your classroom, you always bring at least. Um, uh, if there's another adult there, or if not an adult, then you're supposed to bring a couple of kids. And why didn't you on that day? I I wasn't even thinking. Okay. Yeah, that's, and and that's why I said I yeah. said that's my bad. You know, I'll get a. You know, if I get a count statement from the school, that's fine. I, I just, I was, I was, all I do was trying to, I knew she was parents were coming, I just wanted her to get this stuff done, mm. and then, then that was it. Soto denied the accusations from the starch, but this is where he slipped up badly. What is that thing that's on your door? It's like a black cover, what is it for? Oh, one, um, that's for active assailants. Do you normally have yours drawn? It's always up. Okay. It's always up? Yeah. Unless we, we have an active challenge and we put it down or when the kids play with it after school. Because it's only, it's only taped. Okay. Do you ever have yours up for like your planning period where you don't want to be bothered? Hmm. If you're in the classroom with a student mm -hmm. and you notice it's down, would you have fixed it? Oh, yeah, definitely. You didn't notice it was down? No. At any time while in the classroom, did you say, hey, I'm going to tickle you? Did you attempt no. to tickle her? Mm -mm. Did you place your hands on her in any nope. other way? No, nope. other, sure? other than her arm. Okay. Because she is, she's one of those students that, um, you know, if I did something like uh -huh. that, she would. I know she would tell the whole world. So, so you're I, telling me if you did something to her, she would tell? Yes. So why are we getting this allegation? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. This suggests that he has thought about it and decided that she's not a good victim. Another super sketchy thing is the fact that the door was covered. It's like Soto was trying to hide whatever was going on in there from everyone else. I reviewed the school video that day. Okay. First thing, she was in a sling. She was in a sling and she was sitting on the bench. She was sitting on the bench next to a little boy. I don't know who he is, but she was sitting on, on that Wednesday. Yes. No. I'm, no, I'm literally telling you. I'm going to tell you what I saw in the school okay. video. She was sitting on the bench with that little boy. She had a sling on her arm. She had a band around her hair, had this big ponytail. I see you come down with your class, mm -hmm. your class sits. You just walk around for a little bit. You then walk over directly to her. You begin. You have some type of conversation. I don't know what the conversation was about. After you have the conversation, she gets up. You guys walk up that stairwell. The side stairwell, yes. Walk up the side stairwell, proceed to the second floor. Yes. She had a sling on. I honestly don't remember the sling. Okay. I knew it was the week before, but I... She had a sling on that day. Her sling, she had a full sling on. Her arm was completely wrapped. Soto conveniently can't remember the girl's sling, a noticeable detail, yet he somehow recalls their conversation word for word. Investigators point out this inconsistency to make him realize that lying won't work. Now you remember taking her to the classroom to do work and right. you remember specific details about her arm was hurting and you went over to her and mm -hmm. you were like, 
let me see, and you're like touching her arm. If you remember those specific details, mm -hmm. I don't understand why you can't remember the detail about the sling, because that well, would explain why when, her arm was hurting. Right, but when I went over there, there was no, there was nothing on her arm. But even if, even if, even if she didn't have that sling on, her arm would have still been wrapped. The arm was basically, was, but it was bare. Her arm was in this video. Her arm wasn't there. right, but when she came yeah. to the classroom, it was there. So she would have had to take that off as she walked up with you because on video, she you walk in front of her, you go around the stairs. So these are the stairs. Right. You know how you walk in the door? Mm -hmm. You got to turn around, right? Right. To walk up the stairs. You're in front of her. She's on your left hand side. Her arm is completely slinged. I see her go past the video with a sling, a sling on her arm, and you continue to walk up. You walk on the right side. She walks on the left. Okay. Have you ever tickled her? No. Have you ever horse played with her? Not horse play, like touching her, no. Have you ever horse played, grab ass, whatever you want to call it? Have you guys ever did anything that would allude to being a playful manner, in a playful manner? Have not, you joked with her? Yeah. Okay. So you guys... But not, well, but not like one-on-one, -on -one joking in the class. So, so okay. We're yeah. in a group setting. Yeah. Have you ever tried to tickle her in a group setting? No. Soto keeps insisting that he never touched the girl, but the cops are having a hard time believing him with multiple witnesses claiming otherwise. A lot of other students have told us like, you'll, you'll mess around like every once in a while, like joke around with them and stuff, and sometimes you'll like try to lighten the mood if you see that they're sad or they're down right. or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, they said that you call it like a tickle, like a tickling thing. Where yeah. you're like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to you. But I've never touched anything appropriately. I got like more than eight kids who told me that you said, hey, I'm going to get your tickle spot and you poke them. Have uh, you ever said, I'm going to get your tickle spot? Honestly, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I could, I may have, but I don't. Also, if I had a Bible, I would put it right there. I would, and I'm sure you probably hear this all the time, but I would never touch a girl or a boy, for that matter, in any inappropriate area. But now he's backtracking, claiming he didn't touch them inappropriately. If he believed he could bluff his way out, he'd stick to his initial denial, but unfortunately for him, there were witnesses to everything. Have you ever received a complaint from any student on campus? Yeah, two, like I told you about two years ago. And what was that complaint exactly? The, the, same, the same thing, the tickling. Okay. The tickling? Yeah. Okay. So you have tickled students? No, not her. There have been complaints from multiple students who said that they've heard and seen you gesture toward other students making comments about their bodies. Oh my gosh. Have you ever done something no. like that? When confronted about the accusations of improper student touching, Soto pretends to be shocked. These students come from different classrooms and grades, making it impossible for them to come up with a made-up story. So are these kids all lying on you? I don't know. You don't? Well, that... I know. I know. Well, 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 hold on one second. You said she was lying, but earlier you told me that if you were to ever do something, you know that she would be the one who would just go out there and tell the world. Exactly. So why is she telling the world? I don't know. That's so, why. Well, that's why I'm I'm very confused and upset. But she was one of the kids that said that you were one of her favorite teachers. Literally said that you're her favorite teacher in the whole wide world, and she had so much fun in your class. Mm -hmm. so, I try. I try to. So why why the lie? I don't know. That's why I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I don't know why they're lying. Right. And I don't know why it's a whole bunch of people telling me the same story. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this job for going on 11 years yeah. now. And when details and stories don't change, there's usually something to it. So what I want to do is not, I don't want you to paint yourself as this bad person, this monster. Okay. okay. Hang on. Like I want you to paint yourself maybe as the person who may have made a mistake. The cop even allowed him to claim it was a mistake, but Soto was not budging. I need for you to be honest with me. If you accidentally touched her, or if you did something in a way that, or reaching over her, right. like, gla glazed over her shoulders or something, just tell me. I, I have no problem with that. Because that's not inappropriate touching. Right. I have no problem with that. Like I told you last night, I have no problem. If I'm if I make a mistake, I'll I'll confess up to it. Yeah. But if I know I truly didn't do something In her grades, she went time? from an A student. I mean high marks in your class. Mm -hmm. She was doing extremely well. And then as strange as it is, right after this February thirteenth, this Wednesday, mm -hmm. this specific date that we're focused so hard on right, right. now, we've been talking about right. for the last, I don't know, hour. Mm -hmm. Why are her grades plummeting? 
I don't know. I mean, 60s. I mean, like, well, cause she's that's, doing terribly right. now. In and that's why, that's why we had to talk with the parents with the 504. But the 504 talk happened on a Friday, Correct, yes. long before her grades started plummeting. A significant drop in the girl's grades is a concerning sign that something traumatic might have occurred. And the timing is too good for it to be a coincidence. Soto tried to act like the time alone with the student wasn't a big deal, but the investigator pointed out it was enough time for something bad to happen. She was only in my class in roughly 15 minutes. So there's still good... 15 minutes is long enough. Oh, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you folks. You gotta, you gotta give me something here because right. you're not giving me an ex, you're not giving me an explanation as to why this child was in that room with you for 15 minutes right. besides homework mm -hmm. and you not tell anybody. I would think you would say, "Hey, hey you want to come over real quick and we can go over some lesson plans? Right. Hey, let me go, let me grab a sure. couple of students who mm -hmm. need to catch up on." And that's why I said, I said that was my bad because I was just trying to rush and get through. I wasn't thinking. But that's not right what that happened. What are you rushing to get through? No, just to get get through to get her work done. So these kids who are telling me that you're making comments about their bodies, multiple kids are lying, multiple kids are telling me that, you know, you, that you've reached and you've touched them in inappropriate places, those kids are lying. This child who says that you are her favorite teacher in the world is telling me that you have touched her and now she's lying, so it's the world against you. I'm just telling you what I know. Soto keeps claiming he can't recall touching children that way and doesn't understand why his story differs from others. So the investigator quit the friendly approach, pressing him harder, hoping to get something out of him. You did make a mistake when you commented about these other, these girls, call, talked about their bodies. You did make a mistake when you reached out and you touched these students. You made a mistake. I get mistakes. I don't think you're a bad person. I don't want mm -hmm. to think that about you. I appreciate it. I that. need you to help me, but though. Even if, if I said this, is that a... That's not a crime. But, okay. Not that I, I... So did you say it? Maybe. I don't know. I, well, I, I don't think know you maybe. did, but it's not a crime to, to, make a, to make a comment. It's not a crime. So did you say it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe and I don't know are two different things. I, did you say it? I don't know. I think you I, do. I think you do know. I, I'm sorry. Take that. It's okay. I, I, I don't know. I could have. I could have. I don't know. You I, could've. I just, I, could've. Okay. I, I just don't know. Soto's story is slowly falling apart, and the detectives are closing in on the truth. However, what Soto accidentally admitted to next might just be the final nail in his coffin. Why are the cameras showing me what telling me? You don't okay. know? If the camera is in your classroom and it's showing us what she told us, how don't you know? Why can't you explain that to me? I don't know. You what? have to know. Either you did it no. or you didn't, and the camera yeah. shows you did it. So tell me what happened, well, why you did it. Tell me why. I know it happened. I know it did. I watched it. Why? Was it an accident? I don't um, No. Nothing. I mean, I don't... Do so anything for It wasn't an accident. To touch her? Yeah. If I, if I, like I said, if I, if I touched her, it that I don't rec recollect. If I touch her, then it's an accident. But you just said this it wasn't. was not an accident. It wasn't. I don't know why we're holding on to this. There are cameras in the classroom. You know about them. They're showing me what happened. Tell me. Just tell me. Was it an accident? Just tell me. It was at this point that Soto realized he was playing with fire for far too long. So he finally did the smart thing and asked for his lawyer. Uh, you know, no matter what, I'll, I'll, I'm going to lose my career. I'm, I'm probably going to go to jail after tonight. Why are we stuck on that? Because that, that's my whole future is teaching. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna ever. I'll, I'll get fired right after this. If I get, if I go to jail tonight, I'm, I'm gonna be fired. We're not here by mistake, and we're not here by accident. And everything is in God's plan. It's by His design. We are all sinners, and we are not all perfect. Oh, I know. We all fall short of the glory, man. Tell us. 
Can I have my lawyer? I'm not saying I'm... Okay, no problem. Soda was charged with one count of lewd behavior and one charge of of a minor. He was granted a $75,000 bond and walked out of jail. His trial has been repeatedly pushed back. You'll be even more shocked when you hear what Yassine did. In September 2021, substitute teacher Yassine Asher was interrogated for allegedly girls who were under the age of 12 at the school where he taught and he was exposed by the parents of the victims. What he said during the interrogation will shock you. How long have you been doing this for? Yeah. So these kids are all making that up? No. Can you tell me the whole school is going to make something up? No, I'm, I'm telling the truth about mm -hmm. the other girl, but I don't know about are you willing to take a, li a lie detector test? Uh, it's, it's really a stress voice analysis test, but will you be willing to take something like that? No. Why? I'm afraid of that. Why? It, it might hurt me, that's why. How is it going to hurt you? It's not, it is not painful. Or you're afraid because you're not being honest with me. You cried to me. You told me you were a good kid and that you were sorry. Yeah. But you're not being sorry. You're not sorry. You say you're sorry, you're not sorry. Because you're not being completely honest with me. If somebody's truly sorry and wants forgiveness with anybody, you be honest. Yassine didn't fully cooperate at first. He didn't admit to the accusations and just kept apologizing. This seemed suspicious because if he were truly innocent, there wouldn't be the need for all the constant apologies. I don't understand. Why, why, do, why do you keep on like hiding things? These kids, I told, what did I tell you earlier? That sooner or later, everything comes out. I, I really didn't do that. So if I pull video, I will not see you touching anybody that day you substituted. The second the officer mentioned video evidence, we saw Yassine look shocked. It's like he was surprised by the investigative abilities of the officers, and he didn't expect them to have actual proof. Yassine continued acting innocent, but the investigator still pressed him for a confession. Some, some random girl that does not even know the other students is randomly going to say the same thing. That is just a coincidence? You're gonna sit there and, and lie still, or are you gonna be honest? And after a while, he finally admitted to his crimes. If you thought Yassin couldn't make the matter worse, you won't believe what he said next. I just touched her. Like what? Show me. Wait a hand. On the table. You said two minutes. Did you leave it there, or something else? I left it there. Okay. And while you guys were doing what? Like, was she not saying anything? Were you saying something? I didn't tell me anything. How long did that last for? About two minutes, I believe. She just let you? Yeah. Saying that the girl let him do what he did just shows what kind of person he is. Yasin was charged and found guilty of four underage girls, leading to an eight-year prison term for each count. After serving his sentence, he will be deported to his home country as a recognized predator. But what Vigilant did to his students is even worse. On the 27th of March, 2022, officers arrived at Coach Vigilant de Haiti's house to arrest him on a warrant for multiple counts of lewd acts on victims as young as 12 years old. When the police went to handcuff him, Vigilant had a very unusual reaction. Can I be in front of me? Can the, can the handcuffs be in front of me? We'll see, but I, usually I, no. Okay. We'll, we'll, I'll do what I can. I'm doing everything I can to make you can comfortable. Give me a second set of these? Give me, give me a second. I got, I got something that, that might work. You want to walk over the wall? Yeah, let's walk over here. Give, go ahead and here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Take them off. Take them off. Stand still for a second. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Do you have any type of anxiety or anything like that? According to the arrest statement, there had been an ongoing investigation on Vigilant for over four months before his arrest. The report states that he would touch the girls inappropriately when he hugged them. Clearly, Vigilant didn't expect to be caught for what he did and was even having a panic attack, and the cops had to calm him down. So they decided not to cuff him, but they made it clear that he was still under arrest. You're not handcuffed right now. I want you to remain calm and be cool, okay? There's an outstanding warrant issued for your arrest. It's out of Lake County. Okay, so your beef is not with us, okay? I understand Sergeant House and you have a relationship. Okay, we want to maintain professionalism and respect. 
Okay, but we still have a job to do. So, so what's what's happening is there's a warrant. Somebody, somebody in Lake County or Claremont, I forget who it is, mm -hmm. has probable cause for charges. Okay. They've got a thirty thousand dollar bond. So that means you got to go see a bondman. And you have to pay that bondsman ten percent of that thirty thousand. What is that? What's what? Three three thousand dollars. These aren't my charges. I have no idea what the what the details Your beef are. Is not with me. Yeah, uh, they were just they they called us and said, hey, we would like you to go and pick him up. You may have thought that Vigilant's tears were meant to imply that he was anxious and shocked and had no idea why he was arrested. But notice how he hasn't once asked what charges the warrant is for. Vigilant knows exactly what he's going to jail for. He was later transported to Orange County, where his arrest was warranted. The police confiscated Vigilant's phone and other devices as evidence. The phone contained a private photo vault app, which was used to store inappropriate images of children. Vigilant was charged with multiple multiple counts of lewd and lascivious of minors and was sentenced to 29 years in prison. But if you thought evil teachers stopped here, that's because you don't know the case of Allison. On June 12th, 2022, cops were called to the scene of a car accident that took place in a parking garage. The culpable driver was identified as kindergarten teacher Allison. Well, let me talk to you over here, okay? Okay. So, what happened? No, honestly, the AC in my car is out. I was fixing my hair. I didn't realize they were breaking as fast as they were. Okay. I didn't realize there was a big line, and I literally just smacked into them. I've had two shots and one drink tonight. Okay. Like, Right off the bat, Allison incriminates herself and admits to drinking before the accident, but tries to undermine it by suggesting she didn't drink that much. What she doesn't know is that drinking and driving is against the law regardless of the amount of alcohol that was consumed, and will always result in some sort of legal consequences. So she just made this cop's job a lot easier. Uh, right now, if you had to, to rate yourself on a scale of 0 to 10, unless you're being completely sober, 10 being the most intoxicated you've ever been in your life, where do you say you are right now? Probably like a five, like definitely like, I, yeah. Okay, so, so, so you're feeling it? Not like feel, yeah. Okay. Do you, with that in mind, do you think it's a good idea for you to be driving right now? I mean, I definitely thought I was okay to drive, like, Okay, yeah. well, given what's happened, does your opinion change, perhaps? I mean, no, because I was genuinely finishing my, like, like I said, like the AC in my car was out. I was fixing, mm -hmm. I was trying to pull up my hair and it was stupid okay. of me, but. Gotcha. If I were to hand you the, the keys to a school bus full of kids right now, would you feel safe driving that? Probably not, because I am an education major, okay. and I, like, do care. Like, I would never okay, care so, for any kids intoxicated ever. Okay, so, so, so you think because you are intoxicated, it's probably not safe to be driving kids around? Not kids around, no. Okay. Yeah, I would never want to have gotcha. other lives reliable. Uh, would you be willing to do a couple tests to make sure it's good for you to be yeah, driving? Absolutely. Tonight? Okay. Allison confidently agrees to the field sobriety tests, thinking that being a 5 out of 10 sober is enough for her to drive. But in reality, any amount of alcohol consumed can have a negative effect on the ability to safely operate a vehicle. And after performing the field sobriety tests, the officer confirmed that Allison wasn't safe to drive. However, she has a different opinion. How did you think you did on those tests? I feel like I did fine to be honest. Okay. Felt like you did fine? Like, if, if you had to rate yourself, are we talking like like uh, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%? Um, probably like at 8, like at least passing, yeah. Like, so, like 8 out of 10? Yeah. Okay. Hypothetical, do you think if you were to drive at an 8 out of 10, it's necessarily safe that there's a 20% chance you might I be mean, running like, somebody over I mean, or like, hurting yourself? Honestly, so? no. Like, obviously, I always want my friends to be with someone who's like 100% okay to drive. Like, okay. That's obviously me, but like, yes, I thought I was okay to get to the house. Okay. Based on everything that's happened tonight, okay, with, with the crash that happened here, um, signs of intoxication I'm seeing, performance on these tests, I don't think it's safe to be driving tonight, okay? Can I have my friend take me home? Uh, nope. Uh, so if you can place your hand okay. behind your back, you are under arrest for DWI right now, okay? Uh the officer immediately concluded that she was too drunk to drive and placed her under arrest. You'd expect that Allison would feel at least a little guilty, but that wasn't the case. She went from crying to smiling and joking around with her friends. Here's your property. Oh, yeah. I did really good on my test, I'm not gonna lie. What was the test? I did fucking good. I don't so know why he told me I fucking failed. What was the I was test? fucking followed his fingers. I was fucking on it. All I could see was his fucking finger. Fucking walking test. I fucking Are you nailed in it. Are you kidding? Yes, I'm in fucking it. Uh, <laughs> wait, I think Clint just tried to call back. Clint, please don't be mad at me. 
I was fixing my hair while I was driving. And of course, they told me And I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm not even that drunk. I've had two shots in one day. Yeah. But will you put my mugshot on a t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> don't be mad at me, like I'm trying to be a teacher, and my dad's dead, so I don't need to do lectures right now. <laughs> and then, then, then. Oh, wait, I don't know if you're hot, I'm going to be real. Okay, but wait, take a snap. Oh no, not the lip. really haven't met that many people that are excited for this. Oh, Might as well make a lot harder than that. Posing for pictures while getting arrested and having a mug shot on a t-shirt is probably not the best look for a kindergarten teacher. Allison was taken to a jail facility where she would spend the rest of her night. She faces charges of DWI and for first-time offenders, her bail bond can be up to $3,000. These are the disgusting crimes committed by teachers. But what happens when it's a school principal who commits the crime? I have I understand that, but you're not going to piss in that bush over there. On August 30th, 2022, police rushed to the scene after middle school principal Aretha Dooley Malloy crashed and caused property damage to two houses. But when they asked Aretha what had happened, she didn't plan on telling the truth. What happened? I just have to go to the bathroom, sir. Okay, really but, but you're not you're not answering my question for me. Yes, sir. What happened? I just have to go to the bathroom. No. That's not the question that I asked What's you. Your question you my question that I'm asking you is. I, there was no accident, sir. There was no Man, look, look at your vehicle. I look at the vehicle. Look, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just I, have to go to the bathroom. Uh, you're not understanding me. I need yes. you to look where your vehicle is, right? Yes. I need you to see that all of your airbags have deployed. They have, right? sir. You do not have shoes on right now. I took them off in the car because I came out to speak to you, sir. She said that she was fine as if her damaged car behind her wasn't all the proof that the cops needed. But as she tried to dodge the officer's questions, she lost her balance, which made it clear that she was far from fine. Malloy was drunk and unstable, and everyone knew it. Can you just get the license registration insurance for me, please? Yes, sir. Can I just go to the bathroom, please? I, I, I need, I need to, I need to deal with this first, and then, then we can proceed. I just to have to go to the bathroom. Here. I can't hold it. I'm okay. Just be honest. I, I cannot hold it. I sir. understand, man, but right now you're involved in a motor vehicle accident. I'm not. I'm. You're, you in are. The driveway. You are. This is not your driveway. Is this it's your driveway? Not my driveway. I pulled over because they asked me to pull over. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm just asking you, can I please go to the bathroom, okay. sir? Man, that's let, all I have to man, do. Man, let me let me ask you a question. Here. Yes, sir. Okay. Have you have you been drinking today? Earlier today I was. Earlier today you got. Yes. I can't do this. Please, I'm sorry. I'm asking. My father was a retired sergeant detective in New York. In the Rochelle, I have to go to the bathroom. Surprisingly, Malloy thought mentioning her father's police connection would get her special treatment, but there was no chance of that happening. She insisted on using the bathroom, but the cops knew it was all a lie and got tired of repeating themselves after a while. Driver vehicle, she to get the bathroom, she ended up hitting. I didn't hit anything. I just need to stop. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm fine. My license is spelled there. I have my driver's license. It fell there. It fell like where, insurance. man? It fell on the side, sir. I just have to go to the bathroom. Okay. And I just I, pulled, I had to really go to the bathroom really bad. Okay, I, I understand that, but we're a little limited on options as you have the driver's license. Right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Are, you, are we going to let her do tests? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let, let, let's, let's, let's keep moving. At this point, the cops are starting to get annoyed by Malloy, so they decide to quickly do the sobriety tests and get it over with. Little did they know, Malloy really needs to use the bathroom. I'll take the test, but I really... Okay. Sir? I got you. Like, like I said, you take the test or you come with me in cuffs. Those are the only two options that I'm giving you right now. I will take the test. Okay. After. I understand. You I have to, to. No, no, no. Do the test I have to do the test the before you use the I'm bathroom. I'm just saying I have to. We understand. understand. You have been telling me that you have to use the bathroom since I got That's here. That's it. Okay, I got you. Take the test. I can't. Okay, right, Justin, we're going to move it over here. You, you see these cuffs, right? Please. Take this test or you're coming in handcuffs. So my partner's going to read from a book aloud and I'm going to demonstrate the test so you can see it. And then you're going to perform. Dang. I understand that. 
But you're not going to piss in that bush over there. I'm not going to so you don't have to yell at me. After about five more minutes of complaining about the bathroom, the officers finally got her to perform the sobriety test. And once the first test was done, Malloy started claiming to have a medical condition and couldn't continue any further. So real quick, sure. are you refusing to conduct this test right now because of the, your med whatever medical conditions you're what in? I'm say what I'm stating to you is that I have to use the bathroom. So let me ask you this, are you able to perform this test? I'm unable to perform okay. the test that you're asking me okay. to perform. So that's both both tests? That's both tests. Okay. Right. But I can do what I need to do. Okay. Ma'am, just do me a favor, turn around. Put your arms behind your back. Okay. I can do it. No, sir, I can do it. Going from having a medical condition to being fine is impressive. However, it was too late for Malloy, and after a little resistance, she was arrested and put in the back of the car. But back in the station, she wasn't done fighting yet. I'm going to go back because I think it's a little confusing of what's going on. I'm going to say this one more time. Last time, last chance, it's on body camera. I will go to court that day. The law requires you to submit samples of your breath for testing. Will you submit samples of your breath? Yes or no? I can't ask any questions. Great. Right. Okay. That's a refusal. No, it's we'll not take that a refusal. refusal. I'm no. not refusing refusal. anything. Great. I'm just asking no. why am Too I many not chances, man. to ask the question? Okay. Yeah. You, she's going to fingerprint so you now. Can I ask no, the we're, question? We're, we're, we got to fingerprint you and then we'll be on the way, okay? But just so you know, I've read that at least 10 times. My partner tried to read the other it thing at least 10 times. Time Great. But, and each time I made it clear. I'm just you said. Malloy's uncooperative behavior continued for over an hour, where she refused to take a breathalyzer test and repeatedly pulled her hand away when police tried to fingerprint her. I'm sitting here doing it, and you're just asking right. me to do it. Come on. Stop. Can someone else do it? I, I put it in here. No, ma'am. Go on and hold yourself for me, please. I'm asking, I'm asking and I'm telling to you, do it. And I'm telling you to go back into the cell. Why? I'm telling you to go back into the cell. I understand what you're telling me, but why? Go. I, I went to the bathroom, I washed my hands, go I'm willing to put cell. it in. Ma'am, we we'll ask you for simple instructions. Like I've been telling you time and time again. Can you go into the cell, please? But I'm willing to no, put it up there. We're, we're past that, because you lost your chance. Can you go to the cell, What do you please? mean I lost my chance? Ma'am, go back to the cell, please. I don't understand. Ma'am. Go to the sand. I care less. Okay. Go back in the sand. Oh, Go back so in the cell. you're refusing to let me cell. to fingerprint myself. Are, are you going to continue then? Are you yeah, I haven't no. done anything. So, no, so no more questions. No I more talking. I haven't asked any questions. Just, okay. Just I haven't let asked her do any her job. questions. Can you let my partner do her I job? I haven't done anything. Okay. So I we, put my keep, hands up. If we keep going, you're just going to go back in the cell. Thank you. Eventually, Township Councilman Bill Rutherford arrived, and the police released Malloy. She was charged with DWI and driving an unregistered vehicle. She later resigned from her job. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more.